Ballistic say, I don't care how good that cutty cat is. He ain't that hungry. <laughs> favorite on Timo and we are back for another episode review of marriage boot camp y'all this is season 14 episode I can't remember the naked truth before we get into the review y'all as always regular church announcements if you have not done so just yet please go ahead and subscribe to my channel let me know that you stopped by before you leave give me a thumbs up and then make sure your notification bells are turned on y'all like my hair she had to go and get her some bundles look I know we were quarantined and all of that, but I had to go get my nails done. I had to get my toes and my hair done and these eyebrows. I can't be walking around looking like Biz Markie and shit and Frederick Douglass all upside the head like I've been digging ditches with my nails. No, we gonna be quarantined. She gonna be cute in quarantine. I mean, I'm just saying. Y'all, this episode was good. I like the little drills that they do. They did the neck. Naked Truth tells a lot about um, what went on in the episode. When they do the little thing with the puppets, this by far ha happened to be one of my favorite episodes of Marriage Boot Camp. Y'all, let's get into it. I got my mango strawberry Moscato. About to turn into the unicorn in this bitch. <laughs> Hopefully, y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it. Y'all, so we got Michelle and Stu, right? They laying in the bed, chopping it up. It's the next, it, you know, it's early in the morning. They just laying in the bed, having a little pillow talk or whatever, right? Now, Stu tells Michelle, you ain't as affectionate as you think you are. Child, look here. Stu tried to get him some cutty last night. Michelle turned his ass down. I'm sorry, y'all. Is it just me? Or do y'all not want to imagine Michelle and Stu getting some cutty? It don't seem like it to be something I want to watch. I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? It don't seem like it's cute or nothing like that. Y'all, so, um... All the couples just land in their bed talking or whatever. Each couple gets a gift at the door. It's a gift of lingerie and like some mimosas and some strawberries or whatever. And it has a note on there telling them to get dressed and to meet all downstairs in the back patio, right? Now, Jocelyn got some real shit going on. This was around the time that Stevie tried to get custody of that little girl, Bonnie Bella. Now, like Jocelyn is saying, why would he do this or try to serve me with this now that I'm here at marriage boot camp trying to work on my relationship and all of that? And now, all of a sudden, you just want to throw something up in there to throw me off like that. So, Jocelyn is going through it. I could not imagine having to go through a custody battle with your baby daddy, y'all don't get along, so y'all want to, or him or whoever wants to use the baby as a pawn in the middle of it. I don't, I don't like that, y'all. I do not like that. So Dr. Ish told her to go ahead and sit this little exercise out, both her and Ballista, because they just got a lot going on. And I can imagine being there. You're trying to work on a relationship, but then you got your crazy ass ex, Stevie J. And y'all know Stevie J don't give a damn about nobody and they damn feelings. So anything that he can do to get back at her and piss her off, that's what he's trying to do. Stevie J ain't shit. I'm sorry. I know Faith supposedly made him a better man, but Stevie J still ain't shit. He ain't. All right, y'all. So the couples meet downstairs in the back patio with Dr. Ish, right? They're playing this game called the Naked Truth, where they have to pull the cards. They have to read what's on the card, either answer the question, or you have to strip off an article, um, an article of clothing, right? Now, CeeLo and Shiny go first. Shiny had the question saying, have you ever wanted to be tied up? Shiny's like, well, yeah, yeah, I have. Shiny, I have two girls. <laughs> It's fun. I'm just saying. <laughs> CeeLo's question was, when was the last time you were turned on? He said it was most recently that she was on a yoga mat stretching and she looked all good or whatever. So he went and they went on, got the little goose on or whatever real quick. It was just cute. I thought it was a fun little game. Misha Lay and Stu were next, y'all. I don't care what nobody say. Misha Lay and Stu... If even if they are a real couple, they're not gonna last because it's just something about them. I don't feel like it's a for real, is it just me? But I just don't feel like they're a real, for real, true, genuine couple. Anyways, they seemed like off because you know they asked, like, when was the last time that you were thinking about sex or something like that? She said, which was last night when he tried to get him some cutty and she turned his ass down. Now, it's just, I don't, I don't know. 
she like I not get what she says. She wants to be romance. She wants a little foreplay. Not you just coming in, you just bang, 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 bang my back out. She wants romance. He just wanna get his good little old dick wet and roll over and go to sleep. Everybody got time for that. Stu had the question of have you ever cheated on your spouse? This fool gonna answer, no, not yet. No, not yet. Nigga, what? You supposed to say no. That thought ain't never crossed my mind. Oh girl, you know I love you. I ain't never thought about doing nothing like that. Everybody look at this fool like, nigga, what? Why would you even say something like that? Nigga, do you not realize <laughs> she's sitting right there? She's sitting right there in front of you. But hey, he, that, that's what the fuck the nigga was feeling. Styles P and Ajwa. I don't know if Styles P said he wanted more hand jobs or blow jobs. Either way it go. Yes. I, I believe there should be more of that on both ends. I'm just saying. Bianca and Chosen's girl, Bianca had the question of, have you ever wanted a threesome? She says yes, but Chosen says she's too damn crazy. Nah, that's not no good idea. Y'all, it just needs to be between the two of y'all in the bedroom for right now, because including somebody else, she lying to go upside somebody's goddamn head in the heat of the moment of the passion. I wouldn't trust that shit. Nope, I wouldn't trust for a goddamn thing. Stu had to give me Chalet a lap dance, y'all. That was the most awkward, uncomfortable, painful looking lap dance. He just got on top and just started pouncing up on the lap. I was like, oh no, don't pouch on my cookie like that. That ain't sexy. But all in all, it was cute. It was real lighthearted. I liked it. It was a chance for all the couples, except for Jocelyn and Ballistic, to kind of lighten up and have some fun and just kind of be open. I thought it was fun. Me and my husband would sit back here participating too. <laughs> I ain't going to tell y'all what we talking about, though. <laughs> Afterwards, Bianca and Chosen go upstairs to Goose real quick. And the old schools are talking with Michelle and Stu about this dumbass question that this fool had and answered, no, not yet. They like, look here, y'all two are off. Like, you, you got this thing that you worried about. You got this thing that you worried about. But now one of y'all niggas can come together and make it work. Like, what the hell is going on? Stu says he loves Michelle, but he's tired of trying. I've only been watching y'all a couple of episodes in, and I'm tired of seeing you niggas try too. Like, Stu, you a strong man for holding on as long as you have, because anybody else would have been like, you know what, bitch? I'm going to chunk the deuce to you. I can't goddamn go through all this shit with you now. Jocelyn Ballistic are upstairs. They're on the phone talking with her daughter, Bonnie Bella. She's telling her daughter, Bonnie, that she has to go with her dad's side of the family for a little bit. Oh, it's so sad. I just felt so bad for her. I just want me and Chalet go upstairs to check on her, and she tells him what's up, that this nigga Stevie J is trying to get full custody of her daughter, and, like, she's distraught. She's sad. She don't know what to goddamn do with herself. Now, Styles P and Stevie J are really close, so I just would tell Styles, like, can you call Stevie J, get him on the phone, to see if he can just, like, I don't know, do something. The girl's sitting here crying and distraught. Like, anything that you can do, please try to help. So, Styles tries to call Stevie J. Stevie J don't answer the phone, but they were able to talk to Jocelyn, make her feel a little bit better, kind of like, you know, calm her down. And so, she was able to sort of pull herself together so she can go meet up with the rest of the, the, the couple so they can finish up their little exercises. Now, later on, once Jocelyn and Ballistic are feeling better, they end up coming downstairs, meeting up with the rest of the couples. And so the rest of the couples were there to, you know, embrace them, let them know that they're thinking about them. We're here for you. Whoop de whoop, yada, 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 right? Now, they told them about the exercise that they had to do earlier with the games. So they actually set it up so that Jocelyn and Ballistic could go back and do the card game that they didn't get to do. So Jocelyn had the question of, like, you know, when was the last time you were turned on? And she said, every time the Ballistic walks by. I think that's so cute because Ballistic is fine as hell. Mm. He had to give her a lap dance, girl. It was so goddamn funny. He looked like he was real uncomfortable doing it, too. He said he was embarrassed doing it. Them, what is this penis? Is, is penis supposed to be penetrate and finish? Uh, I don't know. But this penis shit, whatever the hell that is, y'all, it was cute. I love the way the couples rallied around Jocelyn and Ballistic. It made them feel welcome. It made them feel like, you know, when well, you're still a part of the group. And it was all good. I just, I, I love seeing everybody just being there for each other. Y'all, I don't know. I'm sorry. I love love.
I do. I'm sorry. Next up, the exercises was with these little puppets. Now, they've been doing this in the past couple of episodes or past couple of like seasons of Marriage Boot Camp where they have the two puppets and the puppets are supposed to demonstrate how it was in the bedroom when they first got together as to now. That episode, I mean, that exercise to me, I think it's really good for not just any, not all, I mean, not any kind of couples or just married couples, but just all couples to do. So you can see where you were in the beginning of your relationship to where you are now to where you can figure out what it is that you want, what it is that you don't want, what it is that niggas you used to do that you don't goddamn do no more and vice versa. It ain't just me and it's women too. So, Shawnee and uh, CeeLo were up first. Now, Shawnee said in the beginning, you know, everything was good. He used to clean her feet off with his mouth and stuff. I was like, oh, CeeLo. You so sexy. Okay, that's cute. You know, I love men to kiss on these feet. These feet stay per the curd. So, uh, <laughs> go get you some of these toes, nigga. It's cute. But now... She got to do all the pouncing on him. He don't do nothing but lay his big booty belly ass up there. And she the one doing all the goddamn work. So what we figured out now, it used to be fun and spontaneous and romantical in the beginning. Now the nigga boring. That's because he got all that goddamn belly. What he gonna do? He, he ain't like he can really get, get at it from the back like you want him to. Because he gonna have to lift up that belly and then get to rolling and all of that stuff with the belly and all of that child. I don't know how that's gonna be. Stuart Michelle, like, girl. Michelle, let me turn my fan on, y'all. It's getting a little bit hot. We up in here talking. My bad, y'all. Somebody had called me. Anyways, like I was saying, this fool stool gonna tell the whole group when they first got together and had sex, Michelle started crying. Why the fuck you put that girl business out there like that, Stu? She probably ain't want nobody to know that. But she said she was celibate for two years, and so she had finally decided to give somebody her body, and so it was so romantical and so special and all of that. If I was her, I'd have hauled off and knocked shit out of Stu. Don't tell nobody I cried after I got my nut on. Fuck is wrong with you? Let's see, Jocelyn and Ballistic... Johnson brings up the fact that Ballistic has yet to perform any sort of fellatio or cunnilingus on her. I don't, I don't know. I'm just speaking on, on me, my behalf. Um, that's something you need in a relationship. Everybody needs a little oil transactions. Now, if you, you can't give and receive and receive and give, then baby, I don't, um... Yeah, Belissa gonna have to work on that. Belissa say, I don't give a damn how good that cutty cat is. I ain't hungry, nigga. I don't give a damn. <laughs> Bianca and Chosen, stay still, children. They just kids. She said in the beginning she was giving him a whole bunch of head. I believe that. I believe you give him a whole bunch of head now. And he's still gonna go off and do what the hell he wanna do. Child, she is whole pregnant now. They ain't even together. I feel bad for the girl. I feel bad for any woman having to go through a pregnancy by herself. But she have, finna have a boy. Because I follow her on Instagram. Kind of baby, baby Chosen and everything. You and the baby Chosen. Styles P and Ajua were the cutest to me, y'all. They are my favorite, favorite couple on here. Every time I see them, Styles just gets more and more... <sighs> To me, every time, I'm not going to lie, just to see how he's trying, like he's taking this thing serious and he really wants to work on his marriage. He loves the hell out of Ajwa. Ajwa loves the hell out of him. So it was just really cute to see them, you know, talk about what, what problems that they have. And basically they're trying to rebuild their relationship after he had an affair. Like she says, I withhold sex from him when I want to, bitch. Uh, I don't blame you. I'm just saying, you was out there laying alone, spreading the wide and all that bullshit. I'm just saying. But it was really good. It was healthy for everybody to just sort of see that they're not the only ones that have problems. Everybody has problems in their relationship. And you can probably relate to other people and the problems they're having and get advice from that to sort of help and grow in your own relationships. So I thought that was real dope, y'all. So afterwards, Misha Lay and, and Stu are chopping it up. And once again, he's starting to realize more and more that they really don't match. They all in water. Vinegar, vinegar and, and no, salt and vinegar go together real good. Matter of fact, I've been making some salt and vinegar wings in a little bit. Oh, I got all off subject. But the niggas don't mix. They don't mix and Stu is finally starting to realize that. But like I said, he loves Misha Lay. He's just tired of trying to make shit work with her ass when, you know, she 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 too stuck on Suge and, and Dre fucking her up in the head. And, and I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm being for real. Y'all, CeeLo and Shawnee have a whole intellectual argument. I couldn't keep up with it. 
CeeLo felt like she was making a joke out of the whole situation with the whole puppets when he wanted to be serious. She like, nigga, I wasn't making no joke about it. Calm your ass down. Like, I imagine CeeLo is a real difficult nigga to deal with. And he tries to use these big ass words to throw you off or uh, 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 make you fucking second guess your own damn self. Like what you doing is wrong. CeeLo, shiny, bitch, you bad. You got to deal with a nigga that you got to do all the damn work and you got to deal with all his mouth with all these big words and shit. Bitch, no, don't do it. Don't do it, child. But look here. That was in the, the episode right there. Like I said, most people said it was boring. I liked it just because I like to see the couples go through their whole therapy thing. And they was talking about sex. And I love talking about sex. I'm just saying. But look here. Y'all already know if it was anything that I missed. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.